Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video, I got this All Powers S2000. We're gonna talk about a lot of unrealistic expectations that people have for these units. And I think a lot of it comes from people just don't understand. But let's do an unboxing, get it out of the box first. Hermans, does it pass your seal of approval? Does it? Do you like the box? Do you like the box, Carmen's? Do you? Are you done with it? Fresh out of the box, we got four AC ports, one XT60 charging port, Four USBs, two USB-Cs, and your main charging plug in the back. These are some of the accessories that you get with it for charging in your vehicle, charging from solar. And you also get a cover if you need to use it for whatever reason. First thing I'm going to do is charge it up to 100% so we can start testing it out. Nobody likes that person in the campground running their generator all day for who knows what friggin' reason. Don't get me wrong, these portable power stations are extremely useful and it's a great way to experiment and gain your knowledge on energy conservation. And what I mean by energy conservation, when you're paired up with solar, you can see how much energy is going out compared to energy going in and make you have better choices, especially if you take one of these out camping. So this unit right here has 2,000 watts of power, continuous, 4,000 watts surged. And right now it's at 76% power. So this is where I'm going to talk about energy conservation and making bad choices. What I got right here, this is supposed to be a 200 watt little heater. And I'm going to show you the power drain on this unit. We got four AC right up there. Let's plug that in. Long press the AC button. There we are. It's turned on. Fans are going. Right now, with the AC powered on, not running no devices, at 76%, we're already down to 41 hours and 21 minutes. If we left this on, that's how long it's going to take for the battery life to run down to zero. Let's turn on the heater. All right, turned on the heater. You can see the wattage is going up. We're at over 200 watts. And you can see the battery life on the side is already dropping down three hours. This is rated for 2000 watts, 200 watts, 76%, three hours, 44 minutes, we're dropping down. We had the initial inrush current, waters up. Once it settles out at 76%, we're gonna have four hours runtime on a 200 watt heater. Here's another example. We've got 268 watts going out, three hours left. What I have is a battery charger on this battery right here. Got a battery charger on it. See if you want to run something else. Three hours remaining, 75%. Let's power this on. Now we turned on the heater. We're seeing our power spike. 452 watts, 473 watts, 500 watts, hour 40 minutes, hour 36 minutes, 560 watts, hour 32. Energy conservation is what you need to be focused on with operating one of these. So here we are, you can download the app for it so you can monitor it instead of being on the power station because that display will power down. You can see your input coming in, zero because it's not coming in. Output 212 watts. AC, you can turn it on and off by switch. Same with DC and you can also select between 50 and 60 hertz right there. Now that's what I want to talk about. I've had quite a few conversations 
with people about these solar generators, portable power stations, wherever you want to refer to them as. And a lot of people have the unrealistic expectation that if their power goes out in their home, they're going to be able to power their whole house with one of these units. No, you can't be any further from the truth right there. Anything that runs continuously is going to drain that right down. If you want to hook up your fridge to that, you could probably get, of course it depends on your wattage and how much your wattage of your fridge is when it's running, but you could get away with a few hours for sure at least. Now where I find where these do come in handy is definitely when I'm out camping. I run my 12 volt fridge off these, I've charged my chainsaw batteries off these, I could charge my CPAP battery off one of these, and plus with a 200 watt, 100 watt solar panel, if I got good light, I could usually maintain 50 to 70% if I'm running a lot of things throughout the day. Usually in the summertime when it's hot out, the 12 volt compressor fridge likes to run a lot. And when you're running a fridge and the compressor's kicking in and out, that could drain your battery life pretty quick. And that's where the solar comes in handy to maintain. You always got to pay attention to your wattage coming in, your wattage going out, and you can and it has the meter as you guys seen that can calculate how long it's going to last with your current usage. Now the downfall with these things is is definitely when the colder temperatures hit. Once it becomes freezing, these lithium style batteries, as you guys know, are not very good in the cold. The battery needs to warm up some before they start to work properly. And a lot of times, if it's really cold out, these things will fall flat on their face. One of the big questions is, and I'm gonna give you my honest reply, is it better to have a gas powered generator versus one of these power stations? And my answer is, if you need continuous power all the time, then a gas generator is your choice. If you're intermittently using power, not using a lot of power, these portable power stations are the answer. And the reason why I say that, if you're using continuous power, if your generator runs out of fuel, you put gas in 30 seconds, you're back up and running. This thing runs out of power, you gotta recharge it and that takes hours. So from all powers right now, I have three models. I have a 700 watt model, a 1200 watt model, and a 2000 watt model. And this is how I use them. If I'm going out for one night of camping, I will take the 700 watt model. It's small, it's compact, and I know I'm gonna have enough power for the night. If I'm going out for two nights, I'm going to take the 1200 watt model. Even if I don't have good solar, I know I'm gonna have enough power to run my fridge and run enough accessories without utilizing my trailer batteries to make it through. Now, if I'm gonna go on a longer trip, that I don't know if I'm gonna have good light to use the solar or not, and then I'm gonna take this one right here. This one is heavy and you really don't wanna be lugging it around, that's for sure. By all means, don't get me wrong. Like I said, these aren't for continuous use. They'll drain the battery quick. But for devices, whether they're high wattage or not, if it's temporarily, they're perfect. If you want to brew some coffee, coffee makers, what? 1,000 to 1,500 watts. You want to use a small microwave, run for a few minutes. Not going to do a lot of damage to the battery life, especially if you have solar connected to it. Like I said, it's all about managing your wattage is what comes down to these things. Do you know where these power stations really come in handy? When you're trying to be in stealth mode. They're quiet. No one's going to hear you using anything. If shit hits the fan, people are panicking, world goes dark, they're going to hear a generator from miles away and you're going to draw traction to yourself that you don't want. There's going to be all sorts of people hunting down where that noise is coming from. Portable power stations, quiet, paired with solar. You can hide out and do things and hopefully no one will find you. I definitely need to do some more testing with this unit. I've used the All Power 700, the All Power 1200 all summer camping and they've worked flawlessly. This is the 2000 watt model. Definitely a lot bigger for the needs that I have, 
but it will come in handy. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I want to know your questions. If you made it this far in the comments below, what you think, any concerns, and I'll probably try to address them in another video. I want to thank you guys for watching and take care, everybody.